you've now tuned in to Alpha Sports Talk Syndicate. Uh, it's a new sports show from a more of a street perspective. So I know I've been working in TV for 16 years and I know that the sports that you see on the media is controlled. So we're gonna give you a real perspective on what sports really is. But I know a lot of y'all know us, me, I'm Adel, we got King Low with me. He the main force behind all of this. And you know, it's really through a bunch of conversations with him, whenever we're not talking about consciousness, we would always, the way we really began to really build a strong friendship and bond was through sports and talking about all of that on the side because you know we black we are we, we both into like you know being in shape working out fitness and of course that man shit so the sports we really gonna talk about is just like these more manly sports stuff like that so what you got to say king low first of all peace and blessings welcome to alpha sports talk syndicate that's what we are and we just being real plain and simple this is what we do I mean all man shit all the time none of this soft shit none of this fanboy shit we going straight down the middle straight raw and it's what the fuck we want to talk about and how the fuck we want to talk about it I mean so it's basically no rules as far as we are concerned hey it's like the old UFC anything goes so Alpha Sports Talk Syndicate, we the valet Tudo of this shit. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, so we're not going to do this old long-winded bunch of nonsense that a lot of people do on the beginning of all their little YouTube channels and YouTube videos. So we're going to just jump right into it. First subject is this, that Generation Iron documentary, Big Orexia. Big Orexia. You know, me, me personally, I'll let you go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Big Orexia. Uh, I think the production was the Vladar Company. And I mean, they uh, they started the whole Generation Iron. If you if you guys are familiar with the Generation Iron bodybuilding series, um, you know about this. They have a series of documentaries. I think they had what about four regular Generation Irons. Yeah. Then they it's had four. and a few others. Yeah, they had like some. They had one on Dorian Yates. They had uh, a, a horrible one on, uh, what's that muscle guy? The, oh, the take the, all of the uh, drugs. The little funny. Yeah, the natty for life. The natty for life. Yeah. I forgot it, Tony. Um, Tony Huge. Tony. Tony Huge, yeah, Tony yeah. Huge. Uh, anyway, the latest of the generation in uh, Iron installment is Big Erexia, where they supposedly delve into, uh, I guess, male body dysmorphia. I guess we'll, we we could call it something like that. Uh, but it kind of went into all kind of other fucking directions. Like all of these, you know, like uh, in current media, we have these agendas. I'm gonna let Adele talk a little bit about that. And I'm elaborate. Well, my main thing is like, it's basically what you just said. Uh... It seemed like it's only it was just there to further push that gender bender agenda, like that whole, or basically the slander of men. Like it's it's a problem being masculine, wanting to be big. And let me say this, from somebody who works out, the whole purpose of working out is to get bigger. Yeah, if you're already big, yeah, you want to get bigger because that's the whole point. You want to see results. It's like doing a math problem. You want to get an answer. You know, and if you enter whatever you're into, whether you're into playing a, 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 any instrument, you play and then you learn, okay, but well, what's the next phase? What's the next level? You, Because in music, it all, it's always expanding. Long story short, this right here was basically, wasn't about big orexia. It was about gender, uh, this gender transitioning and being gender neutral. That's all it was really about. They touched on the subject, but it was not about big orexia because none of the people that they had on there had what I would say was big orexia. Like you take, for example, um, the big dude who lost all the weight. Mm -hmm. You remember him, the, yep. the, the, the brother, he lost a bunch of weight, but he said he looked in the mirror and said he was fat, which he was, he was 600 pounds. So he cut down or he got surgery too. And he worked out, he did his thing, but to me, that was a documentary itself. Just this brother here, he decided, okay, I hate, I said, well, he, yeah, he hated the way he looked. And he cut down and he started lifting and he wanted to get bigger. But not because of 
he hated his figure. He just wanted to look better, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the whole purpose of lifting, you know, to get your muscles as big as they possibly can get, you know, minus steroids or whatever. But even if you take them, yeah, that's the point of taking because you want to get bigger. But uh, I mean, and I will say this here, we all natural, so. But it's nothing against oh. the guys who take. I just wish y'all would just go ahead and say that y'all take them. But what you think about the uh, the brother who, you know, 600 pounds? Well, shit, first of all, you, uh, you let yourself get to 600 pounds, you need to be disgusted with yourself. You know, uh, however, the dude put in the work and then he still wasn't satisfied even after he did that. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, there are going to be some residual effects. But at the same time, it's just like when me and you talk about working out, you know, it's all about self-improvement. You want to improve yourself. So there are certain times where I look in the mirror and it's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm liking what I see. But there are other times where I, my, my flaws are accentuated in my mind because it's just something that you got to work on. Know what I mean, it's all about self-betterment. Now, as far as... Uh, Another thing, just to kind of piggyback on what you were talking about, as far as this agenda, it's like, can we have, is there any bastions of masculinity left? Now, I mean, to where they're not pushing yeah. this, again, anti-male agenda, this toxic masculinity. The main, the, 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 the whole, uh, basically, the whole bigorexia documentary the largest portion of it dealt with some uh, a former bodybuilder that was confused about his gender so it had yeah. nothing again that had nothing to do with bigorexia it had everything nothing to do with whatsoever. him being a fucking transgender transvestite and i'm sorry that's yeah. not masculine most of us yeah you know we know that there is uh, a homosexuals uh, section of bodybuilding, a fucking subculture. But most people, including us, that bodybuild, that even, or that lift weights, power lift, whatever you want to call it, anything athletic, you own some masculine shit, nigga. It's about being strong, yeah. being the best you could be. For me, being able to lay a motherfucker down, body slam a nigga, whatever you, whatever you have, whatever, whatever strengths you have, you, you, you go on and, and, and you build on those strengths, the weaknesses, we don't want to have no weaknesses, you know what I mean? So we bring yeah. those up to strengths. Yeah. Yeah, and the one thing too with uh, with dude, like you said, it had nothing to do with big here. That's a, a psychological issue. That's a separate documentary. But you basically put that out there to put that in people's head heads to where they can potentially have gender confusion. Exactly. You know, if you build it, they'll come. But that's all that documentary is really about. Because another person they put in there I thought was interesting was the white dude who was cut. He was trying to. He, for some reason, thought he had big orexia, probably because, you, you know, they were presenting it to him. But his problem was, he said he liked his body. And he was, he was leaned out. I mean, dude looked good. But the problem with him was, he wasn't, he was upset because he, he couldn't get a pro car. He, he couldn't place high enough, which is a far cry from big orexia. Exactly. I mean, he was just upset, which, which to me, again, that's another documentary itself. There's plenty of folks like that who, who you know, especially the natural athletes, who mm -hmm. work hard to get to a certain body weight. They as probably as dice as they ever going to get, you know, but they can't get a pro card, which all that shit's subjective anyway. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But again, that has nothing to do with bigger Rex here. So again, again, it's like, why are they pushing this? And we touched on this, you know, just talking personally. And I want you to talk about this. What'd you think of your boy, Victor Martinez? You know, in the beginning of that. Uh, <laughs> I see. And see, it's funny, Victor Martinez, you know, shout out to him, because he kept it real. Right. But the, the thing was, he was the long, bright, we won't say the long, he was probably the, the only breath of fresh air, the only voice of reason in there, but he's only in there for like 30 seconds. Him but what he Greg. said rang true. And there we go, I was gonna let you talk about my boy Greg. Greg, he always keep it real, Greg Valentino. 
you know. So, but those two right there kind of kept it on a straight and narrow, but 65 to 75% was mainly on some gender issues and just getting rid of masculinity, which is the agenda of the day in all sports. We see it in all of them. Basketball has now become a sport that's, that there's no resistance. There's no defense being played. So once you take out the resistance, which is what we do when we lift weights, mm -hmm. we, you work against resistance. That's what makes it so great to see a guy lift like Julius Maddox, bench pressing all that weight. It's the resistance that fight. That, and also more spirituality yeah. uh, on the spiritual tip, that's her rule and set, that struggle. That's what it's always about as far as being a masculine, being a man and being masculine. It's about the resistance. So the NBA, no resistance. People just run up and down, they score all these points, a three-point shooting contest, football, offense just march down the field, which is why I really don't watch this stuff no more. And I'm more in tune with this, but uh, you know, like I say, but that whole documentary had nothing to do with bigorexia. It, it didn't address it to me. They had some doctors on there who kind of gave the definition of it. But if you look at the actual cases that they presented on there, that wasn't bigorexia. That was more, uh, it seemed like he was just pushing an agenda, which if you look at the later installments of uh, Generation Iron, they were kind of leaning towards more of the homosexuality and uh, uh, taking away the masculinity from um, bodybuilding itself. So, well, yeah, and we see that. We, you know, you, my take. Yeah, and you know, we see that with uh, bodybuilders like Kai Green uh, dressing in drag. You know what I'm saying? Respectable. It's like we need, especially black men, to be strong. But we're looking yeah. at this. This is a trend that is going on in sports, period, where the men are becoming weak because you mentioned the NBA. Now, 70s, 80s, 90s NBA was hard as fuck. Niggas was fighting yeah. each other. I mean, slam <laughs> and dunk. And playing defense. I mean, it was just, and it was a physical fucking play. Okay? This is and you didn't, have, you, didn't, you didn't have a huge female base either in the audience, but go ahead. Exactly. I mean, and this is why people, the real men, same thing with football. Football's gotten soft too. Yeah. I mean, where yeah. just, you know, you just, you're limiting the contact. All of these yeah. indeed have to do with that Haru warrior nature. And this is exactly the agenda that's being pushed right now is against that Haru nature. Now at the same time, while the men are getting softer, the women are getting fucking harder. So we're seeing things like, yep. oh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, besides the WNBA, which like, who cares, honestly? I mean, as a man, do you really like to watch that? I know I don't. Somebody tried to give I'll me be honest with you. tickets to the WNBA, <laughs> and I refuse. You understand what I'm saying? So we seeing this whole I'm tell trend. You one thing. Go on. But let me say this about the WNBA. The funny thing is. The WNBA, they actually play low post basketball and go in, go inside. The irony in that, they play a more physical game mm -hmm. than the men. That's what's sad about the WNBA. Yeah. But I understand what you're saying. Exactly. Right? But, but it's just sad that, go that, flip. that, that they now play the physical. Is supposed yeah, that to be, flip, there you go. Now the men is supposed to be aggressive, especially post, come on, that's all, that's all like Kim Olajuwon, Shaq, even back, even Kareem. Back, we talk about Kareem. Yeah. We talk about working that motherfucking post. Now you got the women yeah. backing up. Come on, bro. Yeah. I hear the thing you. is, you know, go back to that real quick. The one way you could prove somebody, you had a problem with anybody on the court. It was one way that you proved who was the hardest. You took some, you took a motherfucker down low. Period. Exactly. Okay, if you was a one point on one. guard, you would get banged one on one. You were banged down low. Forget all the shaking and baking. You just tried to drive and annihilate. Exactly. Period. Exactly. But that's gone now. Exactly. But uh. Into, and and, and one more on, thing. Man. One more thing with go the ahead, bigorexia thing. Greg Valentino, he was another breath of fresh air after Victor Martinez told motherfuckers like, hey, they got these transgenders going to the same bathroom as my wife. It's going to be a, but it's a problem. You know, he was trying to be <laughs> yeah. motherfucking politically correct, but we know all the niggas know what he was talking about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We'll whoop that ass. But Greg Valentino, he said something that was interesting too. He's been in the bodybuilding industry for a long time. Now, I mean, funny guy, the big bicep guy, biceps exploded yeah. and shit. 
used to push steroids. However, yo, this is Greg Valentino for Muscular Development Magazine. The Ramblin' Freak, bro, in your fucking face. Hey, listen, if you don't know who I am, turn the video off right now. This motherfucker's one of the realest in the game. And one thing that struck me, and then I and we could move on, was he said, you know, I got a lot of female bodybuilding friends and so on and so forth. And we're cool and everything. I respect that they could do it, but I'm not attracted to women like that. Because at the end of the day, they're putting male hormones into a female body. Know what I mean? So again, we're dealing with the pussification of the man and then the masculinization of the woman, which is causing all kind of motherfucking confusion. But I just wanted to definitely uh, touch on that real quick. Oh yeah, that's cool. So we'll go on and move on, get on off of that. Like I say, um, if you want to watch it, you know, go ahead. Uh, but that's our take on it. Find it uh, free. We got. <laughs> you ain't lying. Find it free. Uh, the Khabib fight. The Khabib fight. Uh, his last fight turned to be his last fight. <sighs> Man, he's probably the best in the UFC right now. What's your thoughts on it? Khabib Nurmagomedov. Definitely the greatest of all time at his weight so far. Just period. The fucking consummate Dagestani warrior. Who could fucking forget? Yeah. Who can fucking forget after he <laughs> whooped Conor McGregor's racist ass? After he whooped that ass. Jumped over the cage, through the mouthpiece. Jumped from on, on top of the cage. Feet first like the motherfucking Dagestani eagle he is. Feet first to stomp on fucking Dylan Dennis caused a riot and then not only that didn't come back refused to come back to the ufc early and today let his boys off let his countrymen off got them off for suspension and i mean a very honorable man his relationship with his father is is symbolic of one of the best familiar relationships that i've ever seen the man is powerful, strong, fucking aggressive. He, the way that he carries himself in and outside the ring. I can't say nothing but good about this dude, King. Yeah, me too. Like I say, I mean, just from a fight perspective, hey, it was a typical Khabib mauling. The dude, you talk about um, Bruce Lee, be like water. The way he can attach himself to somebody else. And as they move, he's able to move so fluidly to put them in positions to where it's like if he grab you, it's just over, you know. But that takes a, 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 an intense amount of skill, training, and this aggression that you need to really do those things. You know what I'm saying? You can't be, you can't be the typical American and making millions of dollars and working out in air conditioned environments and everything's nice for you. You really, you really won't get that aggression mm -hmm. like that. You know, this is something from a completely different place, which is what made him stand out. Um, but to honor his, his pops like that, to me, that goes beyond, you know, anything that he's probably ever done in the ring. But like you said, to me, what I always stand out is what the hell he did after that Conor McGregor ass whooping. Jumping over that fence to go get at somebody, yeah. To me, like to me, that was that was the moment I said, "This dude here, real right here." So, but shout out to him, man. I mean, and then another thing too, I noticed about him in the ring, man, last night. Shit, man, dude, presence was just large. You know what I'm saying? Like, even when he was just in the ring, you could tell uh, Gaethje was just he was scared of him. He had to, you know, kind of fight off the back foot because of it seemed like his presence was just bigger. You don't see that with too many people when they're in the ring, uh, especially at that weight class, you know, somebody that has a big, big presence. Um, but shout out to him, man. You know, I got number respect for the guy. You know, he put in the work and it paid off. Well, here's a side story. Here's a couple of side stories. Now, it was just revealed that he broke his foot three weeks ago. Um, what? Yeah, he broke his foot. If you look in the fight, you'll see two of his toes 
uh, taped together. And I believe it, it was his foot and possibly maybe one of his toes or something like that. Definitely his foot. Not only that, he also suffered from the mumps. Okay? What? Prior to this motherfucking fight. So Dana White, president of the UFC, was saying, look, we lucky that he even fucking showed up. So that even goes further to show the metal of this man. The intestinal fortitude, the fucking honor to even step into the ring. And not only that, I'm going to tell you another side story. You know his manager, Ali Abdelaziz. Um, yeah. He also manages uh, Usman, um, Kamar Usman, who's also the <laughs> champ. He also manages Gaethje. And he also manages uh, Habib. I noticed that when Khabib got Justin Gaethje on the ground, he didn't punish him. Know what I mean? He did not yeah. punish him. He went straight to some of the most slickish jujitsu, catch wrestling, submission wrestling, many different names for the same thing. But he was but you know, seamless. But you know, seamless but you in know, his technique. Gaethje mentioned that. Mm -hmm. He mentioned that it's okay to get submitted like this better than taking them all, you know, in his post-fight interview. Yeah. He said, hey, I'd rather lose like that than, to, you know, get the shit beat out of me, basically, because that, but I, did, I forgot about, they, 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 you know, they were on the same team. So yeah, to and so I think that, you know, yeah. definitely, I believe that he did that on purpose. I think that he, if yeah. he's fighting somebody with malice, like if he's fighting a McGregor, he gonna beat the fuck out of you. Or if he's fighting somebody, yeah. maybe that's on another team. He might beat the fuck yeah. out of you. But the fact, I'm telling you, he impressed me with his ground game. Yeah. I mean, he almost yeah. had him in the arm bar in the beginning. You know, at the end of that first yeah. round. I mean, it was so smooth. But what was so smooth was then how he took his back. And then when he threw that, he snapped the triangle on from fucking mount. And just. That was weird. And put him out, bro. I mean, I never seen nobody do it so smooth. Yeah. I never seen yeah. somebody do it so smooth. So, and then just the fucking relentless pressure. Talk about some motherfucking warrior mentality <laughs> ma and masculinity imposing your will. Like we impose our will yeah. on the weights. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? Like that, we gonna get that shit up off our chest. We gonna squat that shit up, right? But Habib, just the pressure. Yeah. He wasn't even giving that man no room to fucking breathe. Even when he was getting hit, those <laughs> leg kicks were some powerful leg kicks, but he was just so pressured. Now, I mean, he couldn't yeah. put three and four together like Gaethje usually could do against a regular opponent. So well, Gaethje ain't no slouch either. So, you know. <sighs> now, did you see what John Jones said? No, I didn't see it. So here's the dichotomy. Because I look at John Jones as the second best pound for pound fighter in MMA. Yeah. You know what I mean? <clears throat> he said, okay, I, he, he's going to give it to, in typical John Jones fashion, He, uh, I'm paraphrasing, he said, <laughs> I'm going to give him the greatest of all time till I, status right now until I win the heavyweight title. And then he starts saying, how, okay. yeah, you know, <laughs> hey, and then he said, I got, hey, you know, 15, 15 championship wins, the numbers don't lie. Something about, like, I'm not being delusional or asshole. He gave much respect to Habib. Yeah, but at yeah. the same time, we know John Jones got that motherfucking alpha predator mentality too. So it's hard for him to accept being second best, yeah. which you gotta respect. Yeah, that's the sinister side of MMA. You talk, start talking about John Jones, it's a whole nother oh, level, yeah. whole other level of, of problem that people gotta deal with. But, yeah, uh, we'll be talking shit, about hey, it soon. It's funny. Oh yeah, but you know, I, you know, while you were talking, I took the time to pull up. Um, I guess it'd be our next topic. This pound for pound list yes, sir. that ESPN put out. They put out uh, Terrence Crawford, number one, Canelo Alvarez, number two, Inouye, number three, Earl Spence, four, Teofimo, five, Lomachenko, six, Yusik, uh, uh, seven, Fury, Estrada, and Golovkin at 10. What's your thoughts on that? that list. Keep in mind, you, as we all know, Terrence Crawford fights 
for ESP or top rank, which is on ESPN. But go ahead. Yeah, I think they ranking. Uh, you know what? I love Terrence. You know, on my yeah. uh, on on my pound for pound list though, <clears throat> he's number two behind Errol Spence, and it's just because of the level of competition in that weight class. Because we know yeah. that Crawford is going up now. I can't put Canelo. I, I do have Tia Fimo right now because he did uh, beat Loma. So I do have Tia Fimo in my top five. I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard after three. To yeah, me. it's hard after it three. I don't. Tricky. I want to give Canelo something, but until he stop I ducking, cro until, until I he stop ducking the Charlos, I can't do it. Yeah. Plus, I know he a big and hands motherfucker. Yeah, and I mean, you know, you talk, you talk when you mentioned Canelo, you talking about a guy who went up to 185 and fought mm -hmm. and hydrated up even after the weigh-in. But yet, your real weight class that you're supposed to be in is 160. Yeah. That's something's going on there. But regardless of that, Canelo cannot be in anybody's top anything until he solidifies himself in a division. Supposedly, he's in that 160 division with, J with Jamal Charlo, which is, Jamal, when I kind of made my list, I, I, you know, I wanted to put, you know, Charlo up there, because he had, because I'm gonna put it to you like this, I remember Charlo, Jamal was calling out Triple G before him and Canelo even fought, you know, for yeah. the Canelo series even went on. He been calling this dude, he been trying to get fights, but then at a certain point, he was like, well, fuck it, I'm just gonna fight whoever we can get to make a fight with. And he been doing this thing the whole way through, couldn't really crack the top five with me, which means I got Spence, number one. Yeah. Dude, just the class of everything to me. Great power, precision, punching, the whole nine. A lot sharper IQ than what these other analysts be saying on these sports shows, because they only giving props to these silly people. Like, um, I don't want to say silly, because like, so I, I mean, I got number love for Bud, Terrence yeah. Crawford. Yeah, yeah. But, but again, if we both, let's just be honest here, and he, he, I'm sure he'll admit to this too. And it's not his fault, I don't think, but he has not fought the caliber of opponents that he should have should have fought by now at 147. He done had enough fights at 147 to where a porter should be in that list. He at least. list of people that he done already fought. At least. At least a porter. The Spence One. thing, uh, you know, you, you would figure they would have fought by now, uh, but I don't know. I, I just don't know what's going on there. But because he hadn't really fought a real name fighter at 147. And, uh, you know, that's the reason why I can't put him up there. But I got Spence. And, you know, up until last weekend, I had Lomachenko as number one on my list. So I got to put Lopez number two. Because, I mean, I don't watch this kid fight the last five fights. And, hey, what he did, you know, he did his thing. So I got to put him number two. I got Lomachenko because the dude's still a master to me. He just was in, I think he was a little smaller, you know what I mean, than, but he's a great fighter, Fury, in a way. But all that really don't matter. I just know, to me, Spence is number one. Yeah. But my thing is, man, Canelo just can't be on there. Because, again, he, he, I don't understand these fights that he made, his last two fights especially. Kovalev came off of a, a, a brutal fight. Really, a back fight. to back, really. Yeah, because he got his ass knocked out. And then he came back and beat the dude. Didn't even get a chance to recover. And... Let's just be honest, thanks to Mayweather, it's a business now, thanks to Canelo, it's really a business. Why turn down millions of dollars to fight Canelo on short notice? You know, as far, from Kovalev's perspective. Yeah. So you beat Kovalev. Yeah, Kovalev Why? was itching when for that got... big money fight. You know, Kovalev yeah, needed that big money fight. He's not gonna turn that down. Yeah. Not yeah, me. he can retire now, just like Madonna did after them two fights with Mayweather. Yeah, but uh, um, which which he but, won, but like I say, which 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 to me, he he, he won, won the, the first, first fight. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. He swept the first six round. I'll give a yeah. damn nobody said exactly. He swept the first six round. But I'm gonna say this one more thing about Canelo. You got now we got we got issues where Spence and um, and Bud can't fight. You know, you got top rank. You got Al Heyman, PVC. Okay, there's a little issue there. Whatever. But at 160, the division that Canelo's supposed to be in, 
He on the zone, and so is Andre. Why that fight has not happened is beyond me. Especially now, you can't say because Andre don't have a following or whatever, because right now ain't nobody in the stands no way. So that whole, you know what I'm saying, like, well, you don't have a big enough draw, so I should get X amount of dollars. But I guarantee you, Andre, and we ain't gonna talk about Charlo, they'll fight you for free. Yeah. Just so they can get that belt and beat your ass. Yeah. But we know what it is why he don't want to fight them, the, the, the Charlo. We'll, be, we'll say uh, Jamal, but both of them, to me, they the same, but they athletic as fuck. Let's just be real with it. Another one, two, but a counter right. Face first goes Williams. What you know, a that's, a, that's a whole other set of problems. Now, you go fight Kovalev, he's just going to come forward and, you know, be lumber because he got heavy hands. Just like the Smith dude, he fought. Just when it took dude Bell because he wasn't really about nothing. But you talking about some athleticism when you, when you bring up that, Char, that Charlo name. Well, you know, yeah, brother's athletes. and you know, that was the big problem. One of the reasons why him and DAZN got into it, you know, you want to basically cherry pick. Now, I mean, and like, don't nobody want to see yeah. you fight no poop butt ass fighters. And even Oscar yeah. De La Hoya, you got Oscar De La Hoya talking about coming out of re retirement, you know what I'm saying, and talking, making all kind of <laughs> subliminal shots at Canelo. Because Canelo just, you don't want to fight. Oscar De La Hoya, say what you will. He ain't my favorite motherfucker. You understand what I'm saying? But hey, yeah. as soft as he is, the motherfucker fought everybody. And he didn't duck. Yep. Matter of fact, he fought past yep. his motherfucking prime with motherfuckers way bigger than his ass. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. and you got to understand. And to and, me, he beat... And to me, to me, he beat uh, Mayweather too. That's just my take yeah, on know. going back and rewatching it. That's just my take yeah. on it. He beat to me, he outpointed him, but yeah, he beat Mayweather. Hey, that's but, what his, uh, hey, hey, that's what cool. Floyd Pop said. <laughs> oh yeah, he did, did he? <laughs> hey, why was he training? That was <laughs> that some fucking. Pop. Hey, was that some fucking Family Feud crazy ass shit? Hey, but again, that's but another that's thing. But Pop's keeping it real. Yeah, but and you know what? I did. I still don't read. I know it's off topic. But I just still can't respect I, I, uh, Floyd yep. Mayweather. Ever since Floyd Mayweather shitted on his pops on the fucking HBO uh, motherfucker. That was horrible. Yeah, bro. I just thought that was just that was just. But that was just, to me. That was just that was his coordination into that other side that he's now become this big money man for the world. You know what I'm saying? Like he's he's now somebody now. Yeah. We won't go into no Illuminati talks or nothing. Yeah. But once he separated himself from his father, which is, which is ultimately what they really want. They don't want the black man with his father. Let's just, and here we go. And now see, now people, our conscious side is coming out. Mm -hmm. But not to go too far into that, but once the, you separate yourself. That's the alpha sports of this. That's, that's when the you alpha of this shit right here. The alpha yeah, part. That's what, that's what that's all about. Yes. But him shitting on his pops, no. And his pops kept it real, you know. But, you know, but that's another story, another day. Um... But I will say this, shout out to the Zone for putting on some great fights over the weekend too. Because one of the fighters on there that I really like was Julio Cesar Martinez. Probably the toughest fighter, it, toughest boxer right now in boxing. You know, he's a lighter weight guy. I think he's fighting at 112, that 112 division. But the way he got the belts, his last three fights, I mean, dude, just uh, he's probably the toughest fighter out there and shout out to Gary Russell too because he always put on some pretty damn good performances too but people sleep on him because he's not with Mayweather and all of that but uh you know so but since we talking about Mayweather I, did you get a chance to look at that clip where Mayweather was talking about it was too many belts in boxing yeah, yeah I watched that I definitely saw that I find it very interesting but now but you know you you did you see him implicate himself in Mayweather Productions too? Yep. 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 And I mean, and yep. what have we been talking about as far as uh, before? Were we talking about Javante Davis? Like when they gonna get Javante Davis a big fight? You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Winner. You know what I'm saying? So I know you have some real strong feelings about this, especially in regards yeah. to Floyd's career in those belts. And I want to say this right now about the sport of boxing. I don't want everybody at home to hear me when I say this. 
a belt, I'm tired and I'm at home. And this goes for any company. I don't care if it's Top Rank, if it's Golden Boy, if it's Mayweather Promotions, if it's PBC. There's too many champions in the sport of boxing right now. Too many champions. Too, it's, not, it's not a such thing as a super champion. Not at all. And I'm not taking nothing away from no fighter. It's too, it's too many belts. And the reason why is too... Let me tell people what's going on in the sport of boxing, why there are so many different titles and so many different belts. People don't know, you have to pay, every, for every belt that you win, there's a sanctioning fee. So now if a fighter wins an intern belt, he has to pay a sanctioning fee. If a fighter has just the regular belt, he has to pay a sanctioning fee. Then if a fighter is a super champion, then he has to pay a sanctioning fee. This is not good for the sport of boxing. When the sport of, now when a fighter fights, Every fighter can. Every fighter is a champion now. After you see no belts, is now is like a, a fighter winning a winner winning an amateur trophy. Everybody is a champion. Everybody got have a belt. Now we look at the lightweight division, okay? And I want to say uh, uh, the fight the other day was was a hell of a fight. Congratulations uh, uh, to the okay. winner. Mm -hmm. um, he done his job. He went out there and and did what he had to do. But if Devin Haney is the WBC champion at lightweight, right? And Gervonta Tank Davis is the WBA champion. Now, it's safe to say that Telefimo is the champion at, he's the champion, the, the IBF and a WBO champion. Mm -hmm. But I can't knock, I can't knock what he has done because I have to take my hat off to him, you know, for right. what he has done. And then we, we talk about different fighters pro proving themselves. It's, there's no different from Marquez. He had, they're going to say, oh, Mayweather was the bigger guy. Remember, at one particular time, in, in 1996, before I went to the, when I, when, I, when, I, when I was in the Olympics, I fought at 125 and a half. It's 125 and a half because it's 57 kilograms. So in that same year, I turned professional at 130. So then, so we can't keep talking about guys, uh, this guy is a small guy. To be the best, you must take risk, you must take chances, and, and if it takes going up in weight or going down in weight, that's the sport of boxing. That's how boxing works. And we look at Manny Pacquiao. He done the same thing. He take chances, but then when he lose to me, guess what they say? May, Mayweather was the, you know, he was the, he was the, he was the bigger fighter. You know, it's always a catch-22 when it comes to me. So once again, I don't want to knock no fighter. But I'm tired of seeing fighters after the fight. Everybody got a championship belt now. Like I've always said, Floyd always made himself relevant because he could always hide behind the fact he was always a champion. Because what he would do is he'd always keep a belt. It may not be the most prestigious belt. People assume the green belt, the WBC is the main belt. So he would always keep a belt. So he was always a champion. But if you look at his whole career, he was able to duck and dodge fighters because he had always had a belt. You know what I mean? So and to me, if you want to say you were the greatest of all time and you want to shit on Ali and all the other guys, keep in mind Ali them fought the best that there was at the time. You know, yeah. There wasn't no ducking. Mike Tyson fought whoever they lined up. But, but the one thing that Mayweather did, he made it a business because of all the belts. Take for example, <clears throat> the Ortiz fight. How did that fight happen? What happened was, Birdo had the belt. And Birdo was a bit of a wrecking ball at the time. People forget about Andre Birdo. I don't know what really happened to him late in his career. Well, yeah, that you know, night of the Ortiz yeah, fight. You, anyway, yeah. but I'm just saying, so, he waited till Berto loses to Ortiz, and then he immediately wants to fight Ortiz to get that belt. Why didn't you fight Berto to begin with? Because, as Adrian Broner put it out there, because Adrian Broner, another one who keep it real, Adrian Broner put it out there, he said he learned the game from Floyd. He said Floyd taught him to, taught him this one thing, wait for a weak person to get a belt, and you go get it. Mm -hmm. That's the business in boxing. You don't take risky fights which is what we're now seeing from Canelo. You gotta remember something about Canelo too. Canelo 
Should have lost against Laura, but Laura backpedaled them last few rounds, so I really couldn't give it to him because he backpedaled. You know what I'm saying? So, but taking risky fights, Canelo done learned his lesson. So he's not gonna take a risky fight, you know, especially if he get the right to check, you know, and, and dictate all the stipulations and stuff. Which, but again, back to Mayweather. The dude is always hid behind the fact that there were so many belts. Because think about this, if there was only one belt, if there was only one belt per division, like I think it should be, mm -hmm. if there was only one belt, he would have had to fight that Filipino monster that was sitting in the room. Yeah. And he didn't want, he wanted no parts of that little, that little dude, yeah. Pacquiao. He wanted no parts of that. To me, I don't think he wanted, he, he don't think he wanted that fight back whenever, you know, Pacquiao was just on a, was just, just on a roll, you know. You yeah. Know, you know, Pacquiao, no matter, and, and that one, was man. a eight fight. division champion. And that was a fight that was demanded. Had that yeah. had been demanded for years. And remember, Pac didn't stop fight. Yep. Pac never yeah, stopped fighting. retired. Pac had, to give, retired. Pac had to give people <laughs> rematches and shit just to fucking yep. stay active. And to this yep. day, which I still uh, wish that he would retire now. I mean, come on, the dude yeah, still, he just beat fucking Keith Thurman. Thurman? Gave him yeah. the first A loss. A young gunner. Hey. Yeah. Period. Yeah, I mean, you know, nothing to say about that guy, but uh, you know, since we're still on boxing, man, we're going to wrap it up, though, with the <laughs> the craziest story to me in boxing. Where is Wilder? Where is this cat? Where is he? Exactly. <laughs> After talking all of this bomb squad shit. Now, just, I, I'm going to put it to you this way. Just as if you are a true fighter. See, this is the, this is just the, the, Number one proof and a number one example of somebody that could dish it out but can't take it. You fought a bunch of bums besides a old Ortiz who almost beat you twice. You talk you get in yeah. the ring, you talk about killing a man in the ring, you want to catch a body. Remember that? You want to kill somebody. Yeah, I remember, yeah. You disrespect Dominique Brazil and his son and all this stuff. You believe all your hype, your Kool-Aid. They fed you a bum of the month club. You get in a competitive fight, which you lost the first fight really off points against Fury. Fury coming off of cocaine, alcohol, suicidal tendencies, so on and so forth. You squeak by them. You squeak by with a draw. Biggest rematch. Which he which he lost to me. Exactly. He lost that fight. Exactly. Go Biggest rematch. You get totally destroyed. All kind of excuses. We had Glove Gate. We had the, the Wilder you know, fanboys going crazy. Don't you, forget the costume was too heavy. The costume was too heavy. All of this <laughs> shit. The last time. Deontay Wilder did anything of note. He was popping his ass, twerking on some kind of video. I seen it. Fourth of July. It was a fourth of July. Fucking savage mode. Let me have this. I'm out of the fireworks in the music. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. That's the last thing he did. This was post Fury. You <laughs> two. You yeah. popping your ass. That was the last thing. Yep. Putting the motor on in and shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's. <laughs> but no, I was gonna say he put up the black fist at the end. And that's then what, what is that? Like. Well, the, the other shit. Here we go. Enough, is you yeah. a part of the agenda, Deontay Wilder? What do popping your ass and then pumping the black fist got to do with anything? It reminds me of the shit that went on out here. They had this Black Lives Matter bullshit at the forum. They had Black Lives Matter, but they had a gay flag with a black fist in the middle of the gay flag for pride. Now, I mean, that's what that shit reminds nah. me of with fucking Deontay Wilder popping his ass. Look, but it goes back no dude pops his ass. 
You over, no straight yeah, dude goes, pops his ass. <laughs> but it goes back to that whole demasculizing or, or the effeminization of, of not just men, but black men especially. So that's what that's about. But my take on Wilder, to me, his whole career mirrors the one person that he looks exactly alike, if you look at him. That's LeBron James. You talk about somebody who was just been, the NBA took care of LeBron. The NBA, especially when LeBron, you know, his whole career, the talent was never there like it was in the late 80s, especially on throughout the 90s and maybe through 2002. The talent wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? So it was a bad gauge to say that you're the best in that generation. You know what I'm saying? But long story short, what I, what I mean by they mirror themselves, if you look at, here's the one thing about those two that's consistent. When, when they started out in their sport, neither one of them got better at what they did. They didn't add anything else to whatever it is that they did. You take Deontay Wilder, all he had was a right hand. That's all he had. At some point, you have to develop a jab, which was funny because Tyson Fury said after the first fight, he didn't know how hard of a jab Deontay Wilder had, but he didn't use it though. He don't pivot. He don't know how to fight going backwards. He just wants to stand there with his right arm cocked back the whole fight. Wait on to throw one punch. Same thing with LeBron James. Came in the NBA, couldn't shoot, couldn't shoot jumpers consistently, was never a good one-on-one -on -one defender, couldn't shoot off the catch, can't beat anybody one-on-one, -on -one, dribbling. He just barreled into people. Same player now. Hasn't developed any, anything else in his game now. You know what I'm saying? But people have put him in the position to be champions his whole career. You know, but at the same time, Deontay Wilder, to me, should have never been praised like that. And I, and I hate that for him because he actually believed the height. If anybody who was a decent person, this is when you wish you had a father in there, especially like Sean Porter's father. He's gonna keep it real with Sean. Yeah. He's gonna keep it, we yeah. already know that. Great father. But that's when you wish you had either uh, somebody who just wasn't after your money and that was just in your life and say, look, you haven't fought anybody. Why haven't you, cause my, cause you remember when he fought to Vern the first time when he got yeah. the belt, we, we were both happy for him. We were eager to see him fight. Like, okay, we finally got somebody that could beat Klitschko to fight Klitschko. He never would fight Klitschko. Then Fury beat Klitschko. We like, okay, maybe he can fight Fury. You know, but anyway, long story short, he, he just kept fighting Bum. I'll never forget whenever he fought that special ed teacher. Uh, and this one is more Almost recent lost. fights, too, before the first or two. Yeah, but, but that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I'm saying. So, end of the day, Wilder is not a good boxer. He had a, uh, a, a great right hand, but that does not make you a boxer. You know what I mean? You know, it, that does not make you a boxer. Prime example of an athlete transcending and working hard, no doubt could be all the tools. He's worked even harder to, you know, to, to work on his craft, but this might like Michael Jordan, a guy who had you know, a great physique for basketball, took his diet serious, took the game serious, worked hard, was the ultimate alpha on the basketball court. Nobody challenged him. And that was the worst thing to do was to challenge Michael Jordan and a lot of other guys, even Mike Tyson. Those guys, Mike, people think Mike Tyson was just this guy who was just a ball of energy, just wanted to just charge forward. Mike knew how to box. He understood what he was doing. It was just, his problem was he was just short, you know, so he had to kind of compensate, you know, and he had, to, he had to eat some shots on the way in. But Deontay Wilder, not on that level, he won't go down as a great. He can forget about it. Not because he lost to, to uh, Fury, but because his ass is in hiding right now. Well, and again, we don't care about you losing. We just want to see good fights. Like Lomachenko Lopez. I'll just get on. Let's get in a minute. But I just got to say this. That one, to me, there wasn't a loser in that fight. Mm -hmm. That was just a great fucking fight. Same thing if we could get uh, Crawford and Spence to fight. I don't care who wins. Just fight. That's all we want to see. 
Just like with uh, Hagler and Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard all Durant. and Duran fighting each other. We didn't care who won those fights. We just want to see a good fight. That's all we want to see from, from great fighters or guys that are at the top of their division, you know. So hopefully, you know, top rank will make that happen to get Bud in there with somebody. Who cares if he lose, win, whatever. We, we, I like watching the dude fight, but I don't want to see him fight against guys that we don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, let him fight, you know. Plus, he, I'm sure he want those bragging rights to be able to talk shit on social media to uh, whoever it is he fight. You know what I'm saying? Just to say, you know, I beat you, you know. But go ahead. Yeah, well, here's the, here's the juxtaposition. Anthony Joshua, who a lot of people were talking a lot of shit about, you know, when he dropped, uh, when he got knocked out and dropped the titles to Ruiz, that was embarrassing. You had this, uh, this, this brother that was just chiseled, that was strong, powerful, just yeah. built, losing to this sloppy looking fat guy. Not only that, Joshua lost all of the belts. I mean, he came yeah. off of a masterful, a masterful performance against Klitschko. I mean, that was just that. That still is one yeah. of the greatest heavyweight fights of all time. Yeah. I mean, period. Yeah. He was but, a world beater then. That dude, that, that was a hell of a fight. Exactly. You know, <laughs> because he he now he took him out. Something that even Tyson Fury couldn't do. Yeah. Now, yeah. however, when he dropped. When he lost that fight, come on, man. You know how fucking embarrassing it had to be. But what the fuck did yeah. Anthony Joshua do? Dust himself off, and he went back, and he got his titles. He was a little tentative at times, as, yeah. he, as you probably should be after getting knocked out. I could understand that. Nevertheless, you came back, you got your title, you were in a much better position than you are now. Now, you look at... Deontay Wilder, the total opposite. We haven't heard from yeah. him. We haven't heard. The yeah. contract, the, the rematch clause contract has purportedly expired. Tyson Fury will be fighting somebody on December 5th. We have not heard from Deontay Wilder as a competitor saying, no, I want this fight. I guess Shelly Finkel was saying, that he wants to fight. Where the fuck is Deontay Wilder? So we see, and going back to Khabib, Khabib said, in order for me to be the best, he said, I have to beat Gaethje. I have to beat this guy, I have to beat. Where is the urgency? Yeah. I feel like Deontay Wilder is mentally devastated. That's what I feel, and I would not be surprised if we did not see him again. And, but here's another point, uh, if we wrap this up, could be probably the subject of the next uh, show. You know, does he become some sort of a gatekeeper now or is a launch pad to catapult other fighters? Because there's now a new generation of boxers coming into that heavyweight division who, you know, you got, uh, the, the new big baby, Jared, oh, I forgot his last name. Um, I put a video of, of, of him. You got him, and they probably let the other big baby, <laughs> Miller, <laughs> come back and fight, which I got no problem with. Um, you know, he just you know, he get a little too fat sometimes in the off season. But anyway, um, you, you got him, you got uh, Usyk, which is, which is a whole new set of problems now being elusive and all of that and, and being a lighter heavyweight. That's next so week fight, right? If you can't, yeah, that's next week. But you, but again, if you're that crushed, but yeah, I'm sure he'll, somebody will talk him into coming back. So his next fight can't be a complete bomb. You're gonna have to fight a Du Bois. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And like, yeah. You, you, I, I don't know if you want to fight them, even though they don't have the experience, which is what the aficionados will say. You know, these younger guys, they don't have the experience of all that Deontay Wilder. But if you think about it, Deontay Wilder don't have experience. Uh -oh. He just fight, he just fight and throw one punch. Whoever he so, fight next, if he fights next, whoever he fights next is going to be chomping at the bits to take him exactly. out. Exactly, and that's what I'm saying. And if he loses that fight, 
I think it's pretty much done for him because he can't fight just a bum bum like he been fighting. Like he has to fight a money fight to me, especially if he signed to a contract where he's supposed to get X amount of millions of dollars. And I'm sure he signed to some type of contract like that. So with that being said, he got to fight a name that will garner those type that 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 fight that uh the payout like that. Yeah. So what my thing is, can he even fight one of them new guys? Cause I'm gonna be honest with you, the uh the the new big baby. I think he calls up the real big baby. I think it's Jared Anderson. Anyway, I don't think Deontay Wilder. I don't know, that youthful energy, man. I just, I don't know if he want to fight that guy. I know he don't want to fight the boys. Maybe he could fight uh, a jog, what is it, F.A. a Jogba? He might not be yeah, able to do slow. that, bro. I mean, he might not even be I'm able to do that. I'm just saying, at least he could fight Mentally. him. Mentally. And, and, and I'm saying, yeah, true. Mentally. Yeah, I don't know if he could take a punch from dude. Exactly. You're right, you're right, you're right. You know, know it's take just, another punch. you're not showing me nothing. You know what I'm saying? You're not showing me the heart of a champion. I got to beat this guy. Sugar Ray Leonard yeah. fucking had to fucking come back and beat Durant. He just, you, you understand what I'm yeah. saying? It's something that's within a fighter. And I just yeah. don't think that Especially when you get he's a fighter. Yeah, you, I don't think that yeah. you are a fighter. He should have been, he should have been yeah. fought. We haven't even heard from the guy. Come on. Yeah. Not even though. But I know one thing. I know one thing, you know, you you hitting on something. You said he don't think he's a fighter. Well, I don't think so either, but I know he's definitely not a boxer. Yeah. Because if you think about it, the troubles you have with some of these weaker opponents could have been easily fixed in the gym, working on jabs, pivoting. You know what I'm saying? You know, because think about it, Deontay Wilder, I don't understand why he, his nickname wasn't a snake. He was more kind of like elusive type. He was slim. You know, he was athletic, you know what I'm saying? So it was just weird to me the fact that he wasn't, you know what I'm saying, like he wasn't working on his boxing skills. Yeah. With, those, with that long of a reach, you figure a jab would be his best friend. But, it, you know, but I just know for a fact he's not a boxer, you know. But after getting beat, <laughs> the way he got beat, then he fired the trainer, the threw in the towel, like, dude, get out of here. You know. Had no business, had no business firing Mark Breland. Mark Breland saved him and allowed him to fight another day. I mean, because yeah. he was on his way to getting brutally knocked out. And if he would have got brutally knocked out, nobody would even be talking about a rematch. No one would yeah, even be that's, talking that's about say. it. Because the way it was stopped, at least he was on his feet. Yeah. And he could even play the whole thing. Kind of like, remember when Bernard Hawkins got knocked out the ring? Oh, my God. <laughs> he was talking about, he told my dude pushed him. I was frustrated. I was, I always say I was frustrating him. I was frustrating him. But anyway, that's a that's an embarrassing way to go out. But at least you could even lie and say, hey, you know, I was still in the fight, you know. Yeah. And you just move on. But had he not threw in that towel, I don't know how that would have ended. I really don't, you know, because he didn't know how to hold. Deontay he Wilder didn't know how prone. To cover up. Hey, yeah. Deontay Wilder prone on the ground, possibly. Yeah. Hey, possibly ass up like fucking David Robinson when David Robinson got knocked out back in the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of another guy who got knocked out, not just not just uh, Anthony Joshua, Pacquiao. Oh, and. And, and to, oh, 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 now that was a devastating, and, and, and Pacquiao got knocked out cold. Cold. Yep. I mean, even, did you see Years Jinky? Years ago. Did you see Jinky? Yep. Oh, I mean, in front of your wife, yep. kids, everybody. <laughs> yep. Oh, I mean, and yep. then he, he was, but what the fuck did he do? Did he come back? Are we still talking about Manny Pacquiao? Yeah, we, should, we shouldn't even be talking about Manny Pacquiao. I still got him, yep. I still got him on my pound for pound list. Hey, to this, day, too. <laughs> to this day. To this day. Hey, I, I'm going to be honest with you, and whoever watches is probably going to get mad at me. To me, he's the greatest boxer of all time. A division champion, and he beat a young gunner when he shouldn't even be boxing. Exactly. And took a belt from an undefeated, granted, Thurman's on some lovey-dovey shit, you know, getting married and all of that. His fire is gone. But we ain't gonna take that from him. Yeah. Because Thurman was still Thurman. Yeah. 
he beat Keith Thurman, man. Like, yeah. come on now, in his twilight year. You know what I'm saying? Like, he should be fighting, not exhibition fights, but you know, it's like little no names. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's what you would assume. Yeah. But this guy's fighting real fights at that age. I mean, you know, but the eight divisions, all of that, and not ducking, and always being the smaller fighter, and just, you know what I'm saying? I like, to, that's, to me, that's the best boxer. You know, as much as I like Roy Jones, and you know, and Muhammad Ali, but especially Roy. Roy got a good case, too, for why he said he should be number one, uh, the greatest of all time. But that's just my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but, and my favorite fighter, though, was Tito Trinidad. But still, like I say, though, man, Pacquiao got knocked out. Still fight. Still you said fight. Tito, I but, wish he would stop. Hey, though. Oscar said, I gave him a boxing lesson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you fucking running the last I gave him a boxing lesson. <laughs> hey, but hey, 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 Oscar, not a pugilist <laughs> specialist like Lennox Lewis. <laughs> Hey, Lennox uh, Lewis Lennox deserve Lewis. his props too, man, as one of the best heavyweights too. But That's another show. It goes back, we, 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 but here's the problem though. It goes he back to what we were talking losses. about earlier. Hey, he took his fucking losses and came right back too, unlike the Deontay Wilder. Yeah, but he, the problem he got was he fought in a masculine era by him being a pugilist specialist, this classy boxer, that's not what we want to see in, in, in the heavyweight division. We want to see wrecking balls. We want to see strong men. We, and, that's what and, we want to see. But let's so be honest. I think that hurt him, though. Let's be honest. But he was a damn good boxer, no but doubt. But let's though. be honest. Was he actually a pugilist specialist? <laughs> like Hell what he's saying? No. <laughs> no. Nah. I don't think so. Nah. He just liked nah, to say that. Like that. He liked to say that. I'm a he, he pugilist just be classy. I don't know why he liked the word pugilist so much. <laughs> well, he, you know that UK crap. <laughs> but no, he was he, he was definitely one of the uh, you know, I got a partner who be who I always bragging about. Man, I fuck Lewis. with Linux, man. But, I fuck with Linux heavy, Yeah, I do man. too, but Yeah, but you know, like that whole I being know you, classy. Cuz when he fought know, Tyson, yeah, man. Yeah. Hey man, I'm gonna be honest. I was rooting for him when he fought Tyson. Where they fight at? I was on my on my dread they shit. They fought in nigga. Memphis, huh? Yeah. They fought in Memphis. They fought in Memphis. Yeah. So. Hey, there my you man go. came out to chase them crazy ball heads, nigga. By Bob Marley, had me hype <laughs> as fuck. Had me hype as fuck. Yeah. Plus he had yeah. Manny rest in peace, nah. boy. Oh yeah. Manny yeah, would have no turned doubt. Deontay yes, Wilder. And the and the bad thing is, Manny had good things to say about Deontay Wilder. But they just totally, you know what? They probably made Deontay a fucking cash cow, bro. And that's that. That's all. That's all. Built him up. That's the same thing with LeBron James. That's the same thing with LeBron James. He's just a cash cow for the NBA. And you see now he's the spokesperson for Black Lives Matter. And LeBron James clearly don't have an ounce of rebel in him. Yeah. Like I remember they were showing one interview of him talking about, and I, you know what? I'm going to play it now. Quite frankly, it's just in our community. And I said I know people get tired of hearing me say it, but we are scared as black people in America. Black men, black women, black kids, we are we are terrified. Because you don't know. You have no idea. You have no idea how that cop that day left the house. You don't know if he walked up on the good side of the bed. You don't know if he walked walk up on the, on the wrong side of the bed. You don't know if he had an argument at home with a significant other. You know, if one of his kids said something crazy to him and he left the house steaming. Or maybe he just left the house saying that today is going to be the end for one of these black people. That's what it feels like. If you're sitting here telling me that there was no way to subdue that gentleman um, or, or detain him or to just before the firing of guns, um, then you, you, you're sitting here and you're lying to not only me, you're lying to every African American, every black person in the community, because we see it over and over and over. So if we look, he was basically laughing when he was explaining, you know what I'm saying? How we fear the police or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Which I don't fear no fucking police. I just, I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, I ain't trying to fuck with them on that kind of level, but at the same time, I don't fear the police. But I'm gonna say this though. 
I don't think Manny would have taken him in, but I don't think Deontay really had the work ethic. You know what I'm saying? Like to, because another thing too, you know, Manny gonna push you. He gonna push you. So I, I just don't know. I don't know. But had he worked with him, yeah, Deontay would have been something to deal with because he also yeah. helped out Klitschko too. Oh, so, yeah. But that definitely, you know, it yeah. would have been a good look. I was though. almost mad at, 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 at Manny for doing that shit. But it wasn't nothing yeah, else I mean, popping. I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I, I was mad. I was. It wasn't no kind yeah. of mad. I was. I ain't like yeah, this. Yeah, I was shit. mad because he went straight from I'm like from your boy Lennox. on belly eating that banana. Yeah, I'm like your boy on belly. I don't like this yeah. shit. I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I don't like that shit. Yeah. yeah what he did that. But that, that was, you know, that was in the time, you know. You know, we black for black. Yeah. You know, we ain't play that. Hey, now the lines <laughs> so. and shit is blurred in sports and shit. Yeah, I mean, no doubt. But you gotta keep it real when you when you when you doing this anyway. You know what I mean? Hell yeah, like, like that's we my do. problem with uh, yeah, like you know, like ESPN, they gotta put Terrence Crawford up there. You know what I'm saying? They gotta do that. You know, so and the same thing with the other people who don't really. Cause another thing you'll find out too for the people who um, listen to a lot of people talk about their favorites and all of that. A lot of those people on TV don't really watch these sports. Let's just be honest. They don't really watch the sports. Yeah. So that's something that I think people really need to understand that those analysts, they don't really watch the sports. And the prime example of that is you take uh, like basketball analysts. You can't possibly watch all the basketball games. Yeah. You can't. You can't watch all the basketball games, at the, especially not at the same time. So, you know, but that's neither here nor there. That's Let's right. go ahead and wrap this up, man. We can talk all day. Uh, you know, we talk about You some already other know. Stuff. Oh, um, hey, hey, that real spit. Non-sports related. Yeah, yeah. Non-sports related. Alpha Sports oh, Talk Syndicate. Hey. hey, man, you got to see this. You're going to see this t-shirt, boy. No, I mean, this show nothing oh, okay, in a motherfucker. Okay. I got to. Ain't nobody fucking with my t-shirt game. I mean. Yeah, I got, the, I got on my black underground colony, you know. Man, I was going to wear, I was gonna uh, wear, I was gonna wear that too, man. But it wasn't clean enough, fresh oh. enough, you know what I mean? I need a new oh, one. Oh, now I got a little spot on it. Yeah, I, I got you. I got a couple other things I'm going to get out to you. That's but, right. Uh, yeah, so stay tuned. You know, we're going to have something else, uh, maybe probably around the same time next week. So, you know, support the channel just by watching, you know, whatever. So I'm AD. I got my man King Low. King Low. And, you know. Alpha Sports Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. You know, we're we going to keep it real. And hey, look, in the comments, if you got something that you want us to talk about, just hear our opinion. Hey, you know, I'm going to try to uh, stay on it and check the comments as much as I can. And, you know, hey, we talk about whatever. And we're going to keep it from our perspective. You know, of course, everybody's not going to agree with us. Like the whole thing of me saying Manny Pacquiao, the greatest boxer. Fuck sure him. not everybody you agree with that. Fuck yeah, him. But, but, hey, but, hey, just, you know, just, hey, put whatever you want to put on there. We don't exactly. care. Exactly. You we know don't what care. I'm saying? Matter of fact, do your own show too. You know, I ain't no shit. I don't, you know, I ain't no beef. I encourage people to speak their minds anyway. You know what I'm saying? But let it be your mind. Not the mind that you don't got from somebody else that's making you say certain shit. Be you, you know. So that being hey, said, and don't have no, that's about and, a rap for me. Hey, and don't have no mask on when you do your show, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that oh, fake shit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, we out. Bless.